That was loud. What do we have here? Okay, Google. Oh, this is sweet. Nice jacket. Google jacket. Google Chromecast. Google Pixel stand. Okay, cell phone case. Oh, there it is. The Pixel 3 XL. I really enjoy unboxing things. But thank you, Google. This is nice. Appreciate it. I'm gonna put it right here. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back. This is video 20, I believe. If Yeah, 20, 21. Come on, we did 20 videos. That's amazing. This is actually pretty exciting. I want to talk to you guys about what's in my toolkit. This is very important because I get asked this a lot. What do you travel with? What gear do you use? And then I also want to talk about some other things that have been sent in the mail recently that I think you guys might find useful. That's I think that was about it for my... Oh yeah! Cue intro! Okay guys, so whether I'm in my own city or if I'm traveling abroad, I always travel with a packed bag of gear and I'm sure many of you can attest to that as well. Now for camera bodies, I travel typically with two cameras. I have the 1DX Mark II and I have the 5D Mark III. These two cameras, however, take up majority of the space in my bag and that's a problem for me because I travel with drones, GoPros and a bunch of other accessories. So I've been doing a lot of research lately on figuring out what is my next camera that I want to get. What's going to help simplify this all for me so I can travel lightly and move around a lot more quicker. Now the majority of my work is actually done on the 1DX Mark II and this is a solid camera and has majority of the specs that I need. But everyone's been asking me if I'm going to switch over to mirrorless and get Canon's recent uh, mirrorless camera, the ESR. And I've been thinking about it so I compiled a list of advantages of whether or not having the ESR or having the 1DX is more suitable for me. So let me read off some of those specs. Now for the 1DX, the advantages are that it has dual slots. This is very important, especially if I'm shooting a lot of content. It has faster raw shooting. It shoots 14.1 frames per second. Now the ESR shoots 8 frames per second. It has higher extended ISO, about 400,000 versus the 100,000 on the ESR. That's a very big difference there. It has faster startup, it roughly about 0.8 seconds to start up versus 2.1 seconds and has longer still battery life. You can shoot about 1,210 shots versus 370 on the ESR. Now the advantages of the ESR is that it has built-in Wi-Fi. This is very useful if you want to send yourself content on the fly. It's much lighter than the 1DX. It's 660 grams versus 1,544 grams. It has focus peaking, very useful for any filmmakers. It has high resolution, it's shooting 30.3 megapixels versus 20.2. And it has a tilt swivel screen. Now to be honest with you guys, I'm not fully sold on the new mirrorless camera. I still think the 1DX Mark II is enough for me in terms of what I'm shooting. Now if Canon releases another mirrorless camera or I play around a little bit more with the recent one that they have, I might change my mind. But until then, I'm going to keep shooting on the 1DX Mark II. Well, now that we've got camera bodies out of the way, I want to talk to you guys about lenses. I currently own about 10 to 15 Canon lenses and two Sigma lenses. Now for photography, I use specific lenses, or at least the ones that are my favorite for shooting are on the 35mm, it's a f1.4, I use the 24-70 which is a 2.8, and I sometimes, if I have the option to, use the 85mm f1.2. For filming, on the other hand, I try to use a greater range of focal length, so I'll use the 16 to 35 f4. I will also use the 24 to 70 f2.8, but I'll also include the 70 to 200 2.8. This is a very useful lens for filmmaking. How do you take all the stuff with you at once? Well, you have to think strategically. You have to always be putting together a list of things that you want to capture, and then figuring out what lens is going to work best for you. My advice to all of you is that you have to test out all the types of lenses that you can get your hands on. Because without testing them, you really don't know what will be suitable for you, the type of work that you shoot. I've had the opportunity to 
work with a lot of these lenses over the years so I know exactly if I'm going to be out on a shoot for cars, if I'm shooting product, if I'm shooting portraits, I know what I'm going to include in my toolkit that's going to prepare me the best for those type of projects. Now for accessories, I'm a little bit too lazy to go through every single one, so I'm just gonna do a matrix and you guys can follow along and see what you like. So nowadays, having a drone with you is almost like deciding whether or not you should wear a pair of socks. If you don't, you really quickly regret the decision. And as funny as that sounds, it's actually real. Because every time I go shoot, and if I don't bring my drone, I'm always like, ah, oh, I missed that shot, I could have got that shot. And you start to really think about it and you, you start to hate yourself a little bit. But I do have a lot of drones as you can tell. I have the Phantom 4 Pro, the Phantom 3 Pro, the Mavic Pro, and the Mavic Air. And I also have the newest Mavic Pro two in Japan waiting for me next week. Why do I have so many drones? Well, I'm not too sure exactly because DJI has this really interesting strategy for releasing their technology. I feel like it's like Apple and you're anticipating the next Pro or X, I don't even know what the next number is gonna be, but th they have a Mavic Pro, Mavic Air, Mavic Pro Mark II, like, it, it's getting a little too much to be honest with you. I think that they have the enough technology and they have enough resources to pull together an incredibly good product. That might be the Mavic Pro 2. I mean, I tested it out and I do really like it, but that's the thing. I've liked all their products. Every single time they've released a new one, I go and buy it. The important thing about droning as a photographer or filmmaker, especially for photographers, I would say, don't become a drone photographer. I don't know why a lot of people get fixated on drone photography and then they get too involved. It's not that lucrative of a business to begin with. Second of all, your photos start to lose a lot of their significance because all you're doing is just taking aerial shots of things. I think if you really want to master the art of photography, you have to be versatile. It's not just about using drones, it's about using your DSLR cameras, your GoPros, your underwater, you know, uh, gear and everything else, you want to try to get a diverse range of content rather than really narrow down and focus on just pure drone photography. And it's also probably the most risky one to be involved in as well. A lot of my friends who operate their drones always seem to have problems with it. I've lost so many drones in the past. I think this is like my third Mavic Pro. Okay guys, enough about drones. Let's get these all out of the way. Beauty! What's in here? Oh, it's the GoPro. This tool right here is probably my favorite tool out of everything that's in my kit, toolkit. Several reasons. One, I never worry about it. I think that's one thing I enjoyed about the first time I got a GoPro is that I didn't really worry or stress about where it was, whether or not I was gonna lose it, or is it gonna get damaged. Like my DSLRs, I'm always like, oh, I have to be careful where I'm putting them. Is it safe? Is it bumping into things? The drones, are they gonna crash into a building? Am I gonna lose another $3,000? But these things, extremely versatile, extremely useful. And I did a video talking about the GoPro 6 in Croatia not too long ago. You guys definitely should check that video out because I really break down why it's important to have one of these and show you guys examples cool examples of how you can really utilize this and the water and on land you know the photography aspect of it there's a lot of benefits to having one of these um, I know they just came out with the 7 um, and it looks great the specs are amazing I think one of the best things about it is the image stabilization but do I need to update and get that I don't think so I think this is plenty and this is good enough for what I need. And I also think that if you have a GoPro, just keep utilizing it. Don't worry about getting the next one and the next one. The differences are very minute for the most part. Cool, so I'm gonna put this guy away. Now, I wanna talk to you guys about the fun part. Today's video sponsor. So today's video sponsor is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to create a domain, a website, or online store, this is the place you start. 
couple weeks back, I talked to you guys about how you can really utilize Squarespace in their templates and design a very beautifully crafted website. I also talked about how they have 24 hour customer support, which is extremely useful if you need any questions or need resolution very quickly. But today I want to talk to you guys about how easy it is to create an online store. So I'm going to walk you step by step on how I would create a product online and be able to send it out to people. Now this is a free product so make sure you guys get it after the video. Alright guys so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my website and I'm going to go into the customs option where I can actually manage my website and create pages and whatnot. So in primary navigation I'm going to create a product. Once that page opens up I'm going to decide on what type of product I want to select. So is it a physical, a digital or a service? For this time we're going to be a digital. Once I have that there, I'm going to select the cover. And so what I'm providing you guys for free is wallpapers from my recent trip to New York City. And then I'm going to write the title and I'm going to go to pricing and upload and select the zip file. You want to condense or compress the file as much as you can. So you're going to select the zip file, upload that. You can select the pricing if you want to price the product a certain amount. And then I'm going to have an image thumbnail for it. Once that all loads up, I'm going to go and change the settings to, to visible. Once I select that, publish it. And there you go. Free wallpaper product. So simple. Took me probably like 10 seconds to create this. And I think that's the best part about utilizing Squarespace is that how quickly and efficiently you can have your products online and really take advantage of their online support system. So I urge you to go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Alan to save 10% off of your first website or domain. Alright guys, so the next set of things I want to talk to you about is that I opened up my mailbox to any company that really wanted me to test out, talk about, or just really have the option to utilize any of their gear. And I got some really cool stuff sent to me that I've been actually using and I think that you guys should take into consideration as well. The first thing I want to talk about is this thing right here. This is Ultimate Lens Hood by VLH. And what they've done is they've, they've created a solution for solving the glare that you would get from shooting out of glass windows. So what you do is, I'm going to try to demonstrate this as easily as possible. You stretch this open and you pop it onto your lens like that. And then you can go up to a window and flip it out like this and you ultimately create like a suction cup that allows you to protect uh, any light from coming in and getting any glares. Another cool use of this though I find is that you can reverse it like this and protect your camera in instances that you're shooting a waterfall or and it's a rainy day. I mean it's not going to fully protect your camera, but it does a good job in somewhat resolving some of the issues that you'd get. Maybe if you're like shooting cars, you know, and there's mud that's going to be sprayed onto your camera. One cool feature that I know that's going to be coming up with this product is that they're switching. Actually, no, they're not switching, but they've introduced a miniature size of this for your iPhone, which is really interesting. So definitely check this out. I think it's uh, worthwhile looking at. And if you can solve the glare issues, you don't have to deal with all that Photoshop work that typically goes into that. So, let's move this aside. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is this thing right here. It looks like a lens cap because it is, um, but the company name is called Lens Capped. And what they've done is they've created a solution for you not to lose your lens cap. <laughs> I think it's about time that that happens because a lot of my lenses do not have lens caps on them. But what they've created is a product that opens up like this, has magnets. What you do is you just screw it on to your lens, just like that. And then it's easy. You just push on this part here and it opens up. So whenever you're shooting, you're not going to lose your lens cap because it's always going to be there. And the cool thing is you can adjust it so that if you don't want it to be on the side, you can be holding like this, like this. I find it to be very useful. I know in their newest update, they've improved some stuff because you didn't have the option to put an ND filter on before. So now you do, you can put an ND and the lens cap on at the same time. So it's a very interesting product and uh, I think they're doing really well on Kickstarter. So check it out. Wow. This is Field World Master 6. 
This is a, a pretty interesting on-camera monitor that I've been utilizing a lot lately for two things. First, I had an issue because my 1DX Mark II, whenever I'm shooting my vlogs or shooting myself, I couldn't really see myself and I didn't know what was in focus. So now I can just flip this monitor and I can see myself um, and I can see what's in focus, which is very important. Another thing is that when I'm in production, I'm shooting projects, this makes things so much nicer because you're working with so much more space here. It's not even that expensive of a product, which I find is very nice. It's 4K compatible and it's a 1080p uh, screen, which is great uh, in terms of the resolution that you would need at least. And it has all your same dials and all your other key features that would come up on your screen here projected onto the monitor so you can really control everything a lot more smoothly. I mean, I think this is pretty self-explanatory. You guys should definitely think about investing in something like this if you need it. Um, if you're into filming, it's, it's a plus. It makes things a lot more um, enjoyable because you're not making so many more mistakes. All right, need my next product. Beauty. Okay, we got the Joby Gorillapod 5K. I want to open this, but I'm not sure how long it's going to take me. So you're probably wondering why I have a brand new Gorillapod. Well, I lost mine. I left it actually at uh, a race in, in Milan. So when I asked to get it back, they couldn't find it. I think they probably thought it was like a car part and they probably like installed it. Imagine just seeing my Gorillapod like on like Lewis Hamilton's car or something. Um, this thing is amazing. It's saved my life in so many ways that you guys cannot imagine. First of all, I don't bring my big tripod with me anymore when I travel. Um, and probably I'm gonna get a lot of shit from you guys for that, but you don't need it. If you have solid ground, you can utilize this. Your camera has a, a balancer so you can make sure that your, your, your horizontals and your verticals are straight. Um, this thing's extremely useful for me because I can vlog. It's, it's a solid piece of equipment. If anyone tries to rob me, they're gonna have to run really fast. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is something that I, I started using very early on and has made uh, photography even a little bit more enjoyable for me. It kinda looks really cool. It looks like a, a gadget more than an actual like camera product, um, which is somewhat at times good and sometimes bad because you get stopped at borders and they're like, what, what is, what is this? And you're like, it's a gorilla pot. And they're like, what is a gorilla pot? I, I can't explain the rest of that story. <laughs> There's not much to it. So yeah, definitely get yourself a nice gorilla pot. Joby makes good products. This is their 5k. Uh, and they have other ones that you could definitely take into consideration. So on to the next. The so product that I'm really excited about is the new Pixel 3 by Google. So I just recently became uh, part of Team Pixel, which is really exciting because I've always wanted to work with Google and so this is a, a unique opportunity. Now this phone is interesting because I've had so many different types of phones in the past, about iPhones, LGs, um, and a couple of other different types of Androids like Samsung and stuff like that. But I'm really excited to use this and utilize this camera. It's a 12.2 megapixel camera and the screen quality is absolutely amazing. The color range is great. It has speakers on the front. This thing is loud and it's great for you know listening to music and jamming. Um, I didn't want to talk too much about this. I just wanted to kind of mention that it's a cool product that I was sent um, and I'm excited to utilize it. And then, you know, go out and shoot some photos. I actually might consider doing a video on mobile photography in a more, uh, I would say, urban setting. Uh, I did one in a natural setting in Newfoundland, but I think it'd be cool to see how you can utilize this in a city like New York or Hong Kong, Shanghai. Shanghai, I want to go to really badly, but yeah, I think phones, especially in your cities, it'd be cool to see what kind of you know dynamic range it has in terms of photography and it has a lot of different features that you can utilize. So that's something that you guys should definitely look out for. Yeah, cool. Putting this back down. So there you guys have it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. That's a brief overview of what I have in my toolkit and some of the products that was sent recently that I think that you guys could 
potentially utilize and make good use of. Now, this video was an experiment for me. I wanted to do some sort of sit down conversation where I can talk to you guys. And I really want to get your opinion on the video, but I also want you guys to ask me some questions. I'm going to do a Q&A video where I answer all the questions that you guys have, not every single one, but I'll try to select uh, a great variety of options. So leave your comments below, ask me some questions. I want to see what you guys are thinking. And always remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you guys all next week. Peace! Oh no, wait, I can't. Mary, can you help me? Thanks, buddy.